The cocktail is enjoying a spirited comeback after falling out of favor for a while. Our Seth Doan has discovered a new generation of bartenders reviving an old favorite. Yes, there are performance artists and special effects, but the star of this show is the cocktail. Welcome to the Manhattan Cocktail Classic. 3,000 beverage enthusiasts sampling 44,000 concoctions. Cocktail caterers Christy Pope and Chad Solomon are serving up their twist on a mint julep made with apple brandy. It contains a couple of unique ingredients like coriander, fresh mint, and then a, a date molasses as a sweetener. All of these garnishes and aromatics, as they're called, can almost upstage the alcohol. Look, you look at all these ingredients here. There's sage here. It looks like basil over here. It's almost like a little salad. You know, cocktails today incorporate all kinds of fresh ingredients. Chad and Christy reject the trendy title mixologist, but they do represent the next generation of bartenders, while folks like Dale DeGroff are seen as masters of the craft. He considers the mixed drink America's first culinary art form. We took European traditions of punch and everything and we extrapolated back into a single glass, a single composite ingredient called a cocktail. DeGroff marvels at how long it's taken Americans to demand more from their drinks, considering the foodie revolution is two decades old. You can have a piece of fish from Australia cooked in butter from France with some sea salt from Hawaii and a little yuzu just from Japan. And you're telling me that we can't have a fresh lime in our margaritas? I think we can. <laughs> Do you want to fill these up first? Recognizing a growing demand for craft cocktails, Chad and Christie started a business called Cuffs and Buttons to develop new drinks for restaurants and hotels. So we presented them with a unique challenge. Could they concoct a signature drink for something as abstract as a TV broadcast? Say, this TV broadcast. They started by watching on set and chatting with Charles Osgood. So how about this business of cocktails, though? You know, in association with a, with a broadcast like ours, I mean, the sun's not over the yard arm. Can, is it still OK? Absolutely. Oh, completely. There's this wonderful history of morning cocktails, brunch cocktails. Chad and Christy um, and began brewing up ideas for the Sunday morning cocktail so, in the duo's uh, laboratory, their now, Brooklyn uh, apartment. Citrus juice, um, uh, gra grapefruit. Which houses um, more than a thousand are, spirits. You know, Maple syrup, honey, eggs. Uh, eggs. Creating a cocktail, they say, is equal parts appearance, aroma, and taste. It can take dozens of hours to develop, so we left them to it. Bartenders are making all kinds of handmade ingredients. They're infusing their own vermouth. They're making their own bitters. It's a, yes, it is, it is guaranteed to be rye whiskey. Historian Dave Wondrich knows his cocktails. It had never had anything to do with the cognac at all. We first met him in New Orleans at Tales of the Cocktail a sort of world's fair of spirits. He says cocktail culture has come a long way. Prohibition really almost killed the cocktail. In the 30 years before Prohibition, the cocktail had reached this high state of art with highly skilled bartenders using ingredients from all over the world, mixed in careful proportion, and making these, these artisanal lovely drinks. And then Prohibition came along, and suddenly the cocktail sort of disappeared from the public. At Rayuela Restaurant in New York City, Wondrich grudgingly gives credit for this cocktail revival to, well, the uppie. My drink has to be better than your drink. I want a vodka martini straight up in a martini glass because, you know, I'm not a hippie or anything like that. Okay. At Little Branch, and a bar in New York, Chad and Christy assembled three finalists for the Sunday morning cocktail. They couldn't decide on just one. You liked all three of them? We, we, we liked, liked all, all three, three of them, them yes. The contenders include the Trumpet's Call, a champagne cocktail with fresh squeezed grapefruit and orange juice mixed with Campari and a little elderflower liqueur. You always end your show with a nature segment. We thought that the elderflower um, really brought that to life. The next, called Morning Mojo, used coffee as a base and added in rum and apple brandy. And finally, they presented what they call the Bright Eye, 
And so what we have here is uh, is an egg white uh, with freshly squeezed lemon, freshly squeezed grapefruit, Campari. We took Earl Grey tea and we infused that into uh, gin. We got a little uh, orange marmalade in there as well. So you want me to smell each drink first? Just they asked me it. to choose. And after several taste tests, I know I've got to make a decision. Uh, the bright eye got the nod. <laughs> Did I make the right choice? What do you think? Uh, I think, I think so. our pick was, 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 was the was bright, bright eye. eye. Ooh, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Yes. All of this might seem a little overwhelming to some. <laughs> the aroma of this, the tincture of sure. that. Does it need to be so lofty? I think that's for us to worry about. If you want to learn more about the various minutiae that we get into, great. But if you don't, you don't have to. If it tastes good to you, great. A toast to our Seth Doan on this first day of the new year.